Time for another coffee talk with John. It's a brisk <laughs> morning here in Ohio. The leaves are falling off the trees regularly right behind me. The coffee is good and creamy. <laughs> and I woke up this morning and I opened my email. And there was a message in there that made me want to jump on and put this out this morning. So I took today's coffee time and I moved it down the list and I <laughs> put this one in its place. The question was, and I'm going to try to remember this verbatim because she says, my husband and I recently put our, our child into CCD, which for those of you who don't know what CCD is, in the Catholic faith that's called Confraternity for Christian Doctrine. That is the place where the Catholic Church tells children what they believe so they can get their communion and, uh, and you know, be good Catholics. Um, but what she asked me to do was to um, tell her how she can keep her child's mind open because she feels a real obligation to have the child get um, uh, communion, first communion. Um, so I want to dive into this in a couple different ways. I would, I would handle this entirely different than you are. Uh, I would look at it first as why do I have an obligation? What is my obligation and why do I feel like this needs to happen? Am I afraid that my child isn't going to have some trip to heaven because he <clears throat> because they didn't get the communion? <clears throat> That's the first question I would ask yourself. Second ask, question I would ask myself is why do I personally have a cognitive dissonance where I'm thinking one thing and saying and doing another that because that's that's a huge thing you you don't believe in CCD you don't believe because you want them to keep an open mind as opposed to following in falling into a strict doctrine now confraternity means brotherhood right doctrine is the dogma of, of Catholicism so the brotherhood of the dogma is what you're basically putting the child into um, second of all, uh, third of all, your your child is at the at the age where they're the most impressionable, and I want you to think about that impressionable. They're getting an impression, something that's pressed into their into their mind. That is what confraternity for Christian doctrine does. The doctrine is being pressed into the mind of your child, and that child is going to come home and you're going to say, well, you don't really have to believe all that. And you're going to create a cognitive dissonance within the child. And they're, it's going to be confusing. It's going to be a struggle for them. And, you know, there's a scientific thought that, that the first seven years of a child's life is when they become the person they're going to be. They, they get certain patterns get laid out there. On a spiritual level, when they come into this world completely clean, completely loving and they get their dogmas here um, so as far as how can I keep them open while I'm putting them into confraternity for Christian doctrine I wouldn't do it <laughs> and I and if, if I'm obliged because my family is telling me to do I would say I would say am I more worried about what my family is going to say to me or what my child's going to think for a lifetime. That's what I would say. That's how I would handle it. I would say, as a parent, I would say, I don't want my child to have this mental struggle. I remember, you know, my, my son never got, got communion. He never, he never did confirmation. He's 19 years old. He's one of the most loving, caring people I know. He worries about people. He, he takes care of people. When fights start, he, he talks people out of them. 
He, he, he explains each side of this argument to everybody, and we all come to a middle ground because my son is the one who does that. My son is the one who talks them down. My son is, is a loving and caring. My son is not going to burn in hell. <laughs> my son is not going to have those things. But I remember a day when he was going to a Waldorf school, and he came home one day telling me very profoundly that the devil was real. And I had to deal with my child being afraid because someone scared him, because someone put a fear into him. And I don't, I wouldn't let my, I wouldn't put my child in that situation again because yes, they should have fear of things that can physically harm them. No, they should not have fear of a devil which does not exist or a hell that does not exist or the fire and brimstone of a judgment day. And those are all part of the doctrines that is being impressed, imprinted in, in your child. So I know that you hate that answer. I know that you hate this answer. But is it more, is it worse that you clear up your own cognitive dissonance about it than to imprint one on your child. You know, they, they have a life to live and you have a moment you'd have to deal with. But it's really, that's, one, that's part of it. If you are, and I really hate, I hate to do, I hate to do this. And I want to be very clear about the fact that I hate to do this. If you are hell bent on putting your child into, into CCD, I would instantly mitigate the fact that I would say something like, You're doing this for your grandmother. This isn't what we believe, but we're going to go get your communion for your grandmother. And, and all day long, every time they come home, I would actually, if I, if, if I, and I wouldn't, and I never would, I never would put my kid in CCD. Uh, but if I had no choice and, and was at gunpoint to do it, I would sit in the back of that class and I would hear everything that that child was being told so that I could counter it the second he got home or the second he got in the car because I would, you know, it wasn't that interesting because you know, God is love, and no, no, God would never judge you or damn you to hell. But, um, well, you, and you only have to do this until. But that is setting up a cognitive dissonance. That's literally putting your child in a very confusing situation. And for me, I'm not judging you for your choices. But for me, I would never, ever put a kid in CCD. I, w I would never do it because the whole concept of confraternity of Christian doctrine literally means they're creating a brotherhood which is confraternity of Christian a messianic religious belief doctrine the dogmas of that messianic Christian belief so you have you have to come to your own choice and your own belief and your own um, discernment about what's best for you, but I think it's harmful. I, I I think it's if you, especially if you don't believe it. Now, if you're if you're full blown Catholic and you believe it and you find good things in it, then that that then that's for you. But the second you you said, you know, how do I keep them open? Because I I feel obliged to get them to have communion. I, I, uh, I would absolutely, absolutely pull that kid out of, out of CCD and tell your family, I don't, I don't believe this, so I can't do this. I remember I, <laughs> I went to my aunt's funeral, and the, the priest did his sermon, and I was sitting there, and I, I at that point, I... I, you know, I had a very different spiritual belief. And 
But I was still going and taking communion. I was still going and taking communion. Whenever I go to a church, ah, sure, I'll take communion. I didn't really think anything of it because it didn't really mean anything to me. But it was what we did. It was the, it was the imprint that I'm here. I should get communion. And the sermon started. He did his did a very lovely speech about my aunt. And then he said, at this time, I would like to offer all practicing Catholics communion. I wish I could offer it to you all and hope that one day you will all become Catholic so I can do that. And I turned to my sister and I said, do you think Jesus would have said that? And she went, and she turned to her husband, she says, John just said, do you think Jesus would have said that? And he turned to my nephew and said, your uncle just said, do you think Jesus would have said that? And the four of us did not take communion because we were not part of the confraternity of Christian doctrine. We did not believe in the confraternity of Christian doctrine. And because we didn't believe in the confraternity of Christian doctrine, we were not allowed to have communion. So think about that for a second. And make, you'll have to make your own choice. I can't make a choice for you. But you ask my opinion. And I am not one to hold my opinion back. So um, you're going to have to go do some soul searching about whether or not, you know, your cognitive dissonance is something that you want to imprint upon your child. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll have to figure it out. So you have a great day. And I will talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. The John of the New Channel is solely funded by your generous donations and purchases of private readings and merchandise. To help out, go to johnofnew.com or use the donation link in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.